that you have to count. You have to keep track of. The advertising metrics is very important. The more places you are on the internet, the better. It's called online omnipresent. The more places you are strategically on the internet, the better. So when we say sales is a numbers game, it is truly a numbers game. It is the metrics of your salesmanship. That number. How, many, how much advertising did I do today? How much marketing did I do today? And like I said, marketing online is done in the comment section. Ask yourself this month, I mean last month, how much market, what was your marketing number for, for August? The marketing number for August, the social media marketing number for August is how many comments, the total comments you, you made, whether including the comments you made in your own comment section, as in the comments you responded to in your own comment section of your own post. This is how you have the functional, practical psychology of a salesperson. Where you are not wasting your chances to be a salesperson, you are that deliberate. Your advertising number, your marketing number, your prospecting number. Prospecting, the formula, formula 25. For social media, formula 20. At least 20 new people should know about your business on social media. 20 complete strangers. And you, you have to figure it out. How you will get them to know that you you are, you are um, you know, to know about your craft. Now, your advertising, most especially your marketing and your prospecting, those two and then your sales calling are the instruments you use for setting appointments. I can comment. I would I would really have love to show you this. I can come, drop a comment in somebody's maybe somebody has pre-qualified and I know that this person has money. The the central or the over the overall qualification for prospecting is that the person has money. Whether the person is interested in real estate or not is not your first concern. There's no way you will know if the person is interested in investing in real estate if you have not, if not, you have not initiated a conversation with that person. When we say qualify your prospect, we mean is the person rich? Does the person have money? Finish. Because if the person has money, the destiny of every money is for it to be spent. Is that to be spent on the investment? Yes, the highest is your money. The highest is your money is for investment purposes. But how many people are really using money for investment purposes? Most people are only wired to squander money. So long as the money is in their account, is in their possession, that, that thing will just crash them, spend, 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 spend. So if the person has money, that is a qualification. Now, understand the concept. You know, when you run ads, right? How I many of you have run ads before, Facebook ads? You know, there is there is a campaign that talks about conversion. All those things is story. The bottom line of every conversion is conversation. A salesperson is a conversationist. You are in the business of striking conversations with strangers and familiar people. Now, see, the quality of your conversation is what leads to conversation. That's no, sorry, it's what leads to conversion. Conversation is what powers conversion. So the mindset of a salesperson is, before I go to bed tonight, who and who and who am I going to have conversations with tomorrow about real estate investing? When I wake up early, I'm asking myself, okay, who and who and who am I going to have conversations with? Some of the people you are going to strike up a conversation with are total strangers. A salesperson who is not comfortable talking to total strangers is not ready to become part of the top 20 salespeople of, of their industry. 
I if I start talking to a stranger right now, after 30 minutes, the stranger or the Iteto stranger will think that we've known each other for 20 years. It's called conversational intelligence. You have to keep building and working on your conversational intelligence. One of the ways I help people, a lot of people have stage fright, a lot. The majority of people are, I mean, you can't accept to come to the stage. And one of the simple practical solution or cure that I give to people is, I tell them, see, before you go on that stage, ask yourself, they know this shit. I they not, don't they have blood running in their blood, in their vein? This same person went to the toilet today, so why are you afraid of the person? Is the person a god? Even though it can be a cross. <laughs> they know they chop. They chop like you. They feel pain like you. So why are you afraid? So by the time you start telling yourself that, ah, this person they go to toilet too now. This person they piss. This person they shit. So why am I afraid of him? Or her? Why am I afraid of them? The goal is not, see, Advertising is a business of rejection. Know that and know peace. Know it in advance. Expect the rejection in advance. Even though you are going with intelligence. See, advertising is a business of rejection. Marketing is a business of rejection. Prospecting is a business of rejection. But also know that advertising is a business of intelligence. Rejection can come from the part of the recipient. But intelligence will only come from you. Salesmanship is the business of intelligence. Which is why, see, intelligence is energy conversion. Energy is what you convert intelligence. Now, you know that if you know that intelligence requires energy, you are not going to be squandering your energy on Interblock Niger, on Mr. Macaroni. I'm watching Netflix. Because you wake up with prime energy every day. What you do with that prime energy from the time you wake up at 12 noon matters a great deal. Hence, you have to be proactive about ensuring that the prime energy I wake up with, I convert it to advertising intelligence, marketing intelligence, prospecting intelligence, content, inte content creation intelligence. Once I've used my prime energy for my work's sake, I can now use exhausted energy to interact with Mr. Macaroni. The best work of the day is going to be done from the time you wake up and go home. Because your prime energy is going to become exhausted by noon. You are not literally just going to be dragging yourself all the way. But of course, if you understand how to manage energy, me, at 11 p.m., I still, have, I still have very, very good energy. I go to bed not exhausted. I go to bed with energy. With energy still left with me, in me. Because I'm very proactive about conserving my energy. No space for energy vampires. Because an energy vampire can stroll into your life at 8.30 a.m. And by 9 a.m., you are exhausted for the day. Instead, I only have space for energy multipliers. So I'm engaging with my clients. I'm engaging with um, prospects. I'm engaging with strangers from the standpoint of protecting my energy. Because I want that energy to last me all through the day. Because that is the most valuable resource, energy. Energy is what you convert to money eventually. Energy is what you immediately convert to intelligence. When you wake up very early in the morning. Now, let me say this. See, the first rule of insanity is doing the same things over and over again. The first rule of insanity is doing... See, it is insane for you to want to maintain the status quo of mediocrity. You want the, the mediocrity that, that, that powered your life to where it is right now. Most especially if it's not a place where you like it does not make sense for you to want to maintain that status quo whilst pretending to be interested in success. You must disrupt the status quo. 
you must disrupt what has brought you to where you are right now. You must. You must. If you don't, trust me, we will hit 31st of December and you will not have achieved the kind of result you said you wanted to achieve from the beginning of this year. How many people um, did New Year resolution at the beginning of this year? And by February, you have forgotten about it. This is 4th of September, 2023. It means that we have expanded to third of this year already. January to August 31st is to third of this year. Question, the goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of this year, have you achieved to third of it? If the answer is no, then if you continue doing this, what you've been doing up until now, continue doing it to 31st of December, you are going to achieve the same result or worse. Meaning that you must be interested in disrupting your status quo. You must. If you are not a billionaire right now, you are not a multi-millionaire right now, you must disrupt your status quo. The first law of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Now, if you want to disrupt the status quo, it's not going to be it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to drop pain. If you are used to watching Netflix and chill, if your if your brain is already used to the content of people like Mr. Macaroni, Interblock Niger, um, Tunde Edno. If your brain is wired for that already, trust me, it's not going to be easy for you to stop consuming that kind of content. But you need that pain. You need it. Because it is garbage in, garbage out. The second law of insanity is doing the same, is, is craving the successes of others without the willingness to sacrifice what they sacrifice. You see a lot of people say, I, I want to be rich like Dangote. Okay, if you sacrifice what Dangote don't sacrifice. Do you even know specifically what he has sacrificed? Because there is nothing new under the sun. See, if anybody claims to be interested in powering success in any area of their life or their chosen application of life, you want success in your career. You want success as a real estate consultant. You want success in your relationship, in your marriage, in your business. Question, do you know the universal or the typical requirements for powering that success? Do you know what the ingredients for powering that specific success is or are? You see a lot of people, they are just delusional. I want to be rich. I want to be a millionaire. How? How? On what grounds? Now, see, go and examine the highest performing salespeople. They are early risers. For you to be a early riser, it must mean that it must, it must mean that you are you go to bed early. Because Mother Nature begins to wake up from 3 a.m. The most prime time for you to download consciousness is between 3.15 and 3.16 a.m. I've tested it time and time again. Now, if you are going to be awake before 3 a.m., you must have gone to bed before 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. If any tea we live in an economic planet. Everything requires money. Now, if anybody says that they are interested in taking their economic game to the next level and they don't want to change anything about their status quo, they are not ready. They are not serious. They are just delusional. You are going to have to change a lot of things because success is preceded by sacrifice. If you are used to staying up when it's not work, it's not work related. You are staying up late, it's not work related. You need to proactively work on yourself. Because sleep is one of the one of the most important tool for cultivating success. Sleep is not an instrument, it's not something that you just fall on when you are exhausted. You are intentional about sleep. High performers are intentional about sleep. 
And if you say you are interested in becoming a peak performing consultant, a peak performing realtor, a peak performing real estate consultant, you must take quality sleep seriously. Go on a 30 day early to bed challenge. 30 day early to bed challenge where you have a bedtime alarm ring and once it rings, you drop everything and go to bed. Don't allow all these celebrities give you the permission to squander one of your most important life resources, your time. There is no other thing that is as therapeutic as sleep. Not comedy, not movie. Sleep is the most therapeutic thing. So if, if, if you're allowing all their marketing gimmicks, the trailer, that, that 40 second trailer that they, that they posted to be the thing that is making you stay up at night, no problem. If that thing is going to pay your bill, you can continue. Go on a 30 day early to bed challenge. You set the alarm for you to stop work for the day. If it's going to be 7 p.m., once the alarm ring, the next two hours, you want to spend quality time with your family. One hour before bed, put away your phone. Whatever is, you can wait till tomorrow. I'm telling you the, the, the functional mechanics for powering your life if you are interested in becoming a high performing real estate consultant. Sleep is sleep, quality sleep. And I've said it before that the last two hours of the day and the first two hours of the incoming day is the most important four hours of sleep. Between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., the most important. But you give yourself an advantage if you, if you are asleep before that time. But if it is work, if you are awake for work purpose, it's okay. But if you are awake because you want to watch news or you want to watch me um, that it freeze life, how is that going to give you prospects, give you clients? You have to be very deliberate. Pretty important. So back to what I was saying, salesmanship is a numbers game. You are either ready to become a salesperson or you're not. And what qualifies you to be a salesperson is the metrics of salesmanship. There are 365 days in a year. If you want to post two times a day, it means that you should prepare 730 content for the year. You should see, you should play with numbers. Salespeople play with numbers. Rich people talk in figures. Some people, if they hear one million, their mind will cut. How much more? 100 million. They go shit for body. Some people, if they see an alert in their account like this, a lot of just 500k, they will not be able to sleep that night. Just 500k. Because they've not been playing with numbers, they've not been playing with figures. Some figures. See, poverty is not the lack of required resources. It is a game of the mind. You are poor in your mind, not because you are poor in your account. You are poor in your bank account because you are poor in your mind. Because money is as simple as energy conversion. Money is energy transfer. I, I published a nice content. That is energy. Energy went into creating that content. Somebody saw the content. Man, I can't even. This is part of, of September. I've already had, I've already had seven Zoom meetings. I still have one yesterday because of my content on TikTok. Money is energy transfer. See, every single day is an opportunity for you to sow your prime energy into the universe. 
and part of the one of the most functional way to do that is through content, through advertising, through marketing. That is what I mean by these pillars breaking through the sales. But you're not doing anything. You're just waiting for a miracle to fall on your lap. You're hoping to make sales. You're praying to make sales. It is the, it is the pillars of salesmanship, the metrics of the pillars of salesmanship that will break through, to break forth into sales. Question, what are the metrics of your salesmanship? I use the person that I would say, I don't really like to talk to strangers. I don't like, it's a lie. It's not like you don't like to talk to strangers. You don't like how it feels when they say no to you. You don't like how it feels when they reject you. But you see, it's because you don't, you have not settled it in, in your mind. Like they say, no this and no this. You've not settled it in your mind. Sean, what if you close one, one plus one stranger, 99 have rejected you. That is salesmanship. But you see, the more you power your salesmanship on the back of the force of the pillars of salesmanship, the more you become an authority in the marketplace. The more you are perceived. I was live, I think early this morning. Yeah, early this morning on Facebook. Because I went live on TikTok. I, I went live on Instagram. I went live on Facebook. And on the Facebook, on my life, I was going live simultaneously on like seven different Facebook groups. The functionality is there. Let me show you guys. On Facebook, the groups that you are either an admin of or the creator of, but also Facebook pages. You can go live on your. Okay, I think it's because my past, my, my personal profile now is now is now a creator's account. You can go live. You can go live on your personal profile and simultaneously go live on multiple pages. You can go live on your personal profile and simultaneously go live on multiple groups. This is this is this is advertising on steroids. What is the metrics? When was the last time you went live on any social media platform? So when was the last time you went live on any social media platform? A month ago. Like a month ago. See, that's too long. This thing is not mysterious. So it's pretty important that we understand this. It is strictly there's no mystery to it. Ah, yeah. There's no secret. There's no secret formula. Ah, what was the secret of your show? There is no secret in salesmanship. It is hardcore grinding. It is grinding. It is work ethic. Do you know that salespeople who make at least a million dollars per, per, per annum? They make at least 18,000 sales calls per year. It is work ethic. Salesmanship is work ethic. So you have to prepare your psychology for the work. Because if you are not psychologically prepared for the work, you will not do the work. It is guaranteed. And the way you psychologically prepare yourself for the work is the metrics of salesmanship. Know in advance how, my, how much what's going to be my advertising number for this week. Know it in advance. Is it going to be 100? Is it going to be 200? Know it in advance. What's going to be my marketing number for this week? Know it in advance. Sundays are my super strategic days. Sundays is when I finish my entire week. I plan everything. I don't go anywhere on Sunday. Everything I want to do for the week, I plan it on Sunday. All my advertising copies, all my the number of advertising I'm going to do that week, the marketing, the prospecting, the sales calls, the appointment setting, the appointment I'm going to set for that week. All those things are numbers. It's numbers, numbers, numbers. Sales magic is numbers, numbers, numbers. That is, see, the metrics.
use of sales manager, you can use it to apply for loan. Are you aware? If you diligently carry out your salesmanship activity for one year and you have it on record, you can carry that record to a bank and show them how much money you've brought in. You can you can get the loan. That's how powerful. That's how powerful the metric of sales manager is. Because investors, it's all about the figures. If you like, write seven page or whatever, ten pages business proposal. Oh, I'm sorry, um, um, business plan. They are going to go to it. It's the numbers they are interested in. All those, um, you know, as a child, I had a dream. They did that one, they don't concern them. It's the, it's the figures. Because mathematics governs the universe. So if you want to govern your life, chapter on your path, to becoming a high-performing real estate consultant, it's, the, it's in the numbers. Do you know why a lot of you don't like maths? Because numbers don't lie. They can use words to lie. I don't, I, they, they work, they work. Where are the numbers? To prove, to prove that you are working, where are the numbers? Where is the proof that you are working? You think I will take your word for it? Show me the numbers. That is what sales magic is. And like I said, sales magic is a game of psychology. That's why we, 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 I you know, introduced you to the psychology of selling. It's psychology first. Conquer that, conquer the requirement of sales magic first psychologically by putting down the numbers. I talked about goal setting. Put down the numbers. The mathematics of goal setting. The mathematics of sales management. Put down the numbers. Acquaint yourself with the numbers. Once your psychology has adopted and accepted, it is already 80% successful. The goal of advertising is to ensure that you stay visible in the marketplace. The goal of marketing and prospecting and sales calling is to book an appointment. You can make 10 sales calls in 40 minutes. Because you're not trying to speak. Nobody sells on the phone. Even for those in the diaspora, you want to book a Zoom appointment with them. And it's easier for those in the diaspora to, you don't have to call them through your content. Do you know that a lot of diasporans consume video content a lot? If they are searching for anything, it is the video content of a perceived authority in that industry that they will use to make decisions. Are you aware? Are you aware that a lot of Nigerians in the diaspora are using the content of these fake ass bloggers, these broke ass bloggers, to determine where, whether or not to invest in Nigeria? Are you aware? Which is the reason why all of us here to be on a content creation game. Because as they go on YouTube to search real estate investing in Nigeria, some of your content will pop up. Not while they are searching it. One useless blogger is saying, why did you not invest in Nigeria? Somebody that doesn't know nothing about investment, he or, he, he or she is not an investor, but he claims to be someone who has an opinion. Why, why, why people should not invest? You that you're on the field. Where is your content? See, that's the game I'm playing. A game, I, you know, I'm playing the game to silence the voice of mediocre people, however popular they are. And I'm using content as my instrument, my weapon of war. See, if you have that kind of mindset, do you think that you'll be, you'll be thinking of what, what should I post today? What should I post today? When it is, it is warfare. Salesmanship is war. Do you, do you see a true warrior contemplate on whether to do push-up? How do I do push-up? A warrior. Content is very easy. The more content you create, the more dedicated you are to content creation, the, the easier it becomes. All those talk of writer's block. It, it has never happened to me. 
because I'm always creating content. I created content on my way here. The guy that brought me, because I decided I don't want to drive today. But I created a couple of content on my way here. We're in traffic for like one hour plus. It's easy to create content. Just know, have a sense of purpose. What are you doing? There are countless ways to create content. But like I said, if you want to become a high-performing realtor, you have to plan ahead. The reason why Sundays is when I plan my week is because I know that I cannot be an impulsive entrepreneur. I cannot be an impulsive salesperson. Because if you are impulsive about content, if you don't plan content in advance, you are going to miss a lot of How many times have you posted and then like 17 hours later you saw your typo? You saw the typographical error after 17 hours of posting. And nobody called your attention to it until you saw it yourself. That's why it's important for you to create content in advance. There are times that I will have created a content on Sunday, and the day I want to post it, I will just see the title. I will easily correct it. The reason you want to create content in advance is so that you can sleep on it. You can sleep on it and wake up with prime energy. When you engage content with prime energy, you are more stable in terms of your ability to see, to see the errors, to spot out the errors. So prospecting, marketing, Sales calling is to book appointment. Hello, sir. How are you doing, sir? Uh, my name is Joe Ambassador. Um, I'm from Appview Investment Limited. And um, I got a number from a friend. You know, he, he told me that you, you, you most likely will be interested in investing in real estate. And I'm a real estate investment consultant. I would like to book an appointment with you. What day of the week um, would be most suitable for, you know, for us to have an appointment, for me to come see you? Um, how is tomorrow? Or how is next tomorrow? How is Tuesday by 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 1 p.m. You a salesperson is proficient at booking appointments. But most likely than not, it is appointments that leads to selling. How many how many of us have made any sale without booking appointment? Most especially in real estate. When you want to drop 500 k you want to drop 5 million, you want to drop 3 million, they must see you. They must size you up. So set as many appointments as possible because it is those appointments that will lead to sales. I know I'm not, I'm, I, I normally advise real estate sales um, consultants to set at least, attempt to set at least 15 appointments per week, at least. Bad as if bad, two or three will pull through. But you are on the game of appointment setting. Ask yourself, last month, Anna, how many appointments did you set last month? Is that? Only two. Is it? A whole month, madam. A whole month. Madam. Do you know why? Do you know why certain people, you know, um, realtors, complain about their prospect complaining about them? Overboarding them, as in overboarding them, is because they have too few, too little people that they are prospecting. Think about it, there are 30, 30 days in a month, right? If I have like 400 people I'm trying to prospect, maybe I prospect 10 people day today. <laughs> Before I'll come back to those 10 people, it will be after like 30 days. Nobody will say I'm bugging him or her when the last time I, I, I sent them a message was 30 days ago. But because you only have three people you are prospecting, why would they not think that you are booking them? That's why. It's appointment. The sales call is, is for appointment. The prospecting is for appointments. The marketing is for appointments. You most likely will go on like three, four appointments before, before a sale happens. If you are very good, maybe after two appointments with that same person, it leads to a sale. But a salesperson is appointment setting conscious. Most people, most salespeople that are trained in Nigeria, they are not appointment, they don't even know about appointment setting. So you can make it do it. They are not conscious. They don't realize that 
this is part of the pillar of sales management, appointment setting. They don't. Because they are operating with a little, you know, hopefully I can make a sale. <laughs> Hope is not a strategy. Like, like they will say in the ghetto, Bagosh. Hope is not a strategy. It is the pillars of salesmanship that you power that will break through into sales. Now, don't forget that salesmanship is a business of intelligence. And a salesperson, a true salesperson, does not post faith on impulse. You are not going to post that thing because it is, it is a viral content. It's viral video. You want to post it. At doing your 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 brand, you are, you are harming your brand when you do that. I don't care even if it, if that content got 1.5 billion views on somebody's phone. I don't care. It's none of your business. It is not part of the 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 element of your branding. The elements of your branding are the elements of your branding that you are predetermined as the element of your branding. If you have sat down and come up with the elements of your branding, you have come up with the components and the pillars of your salesmanship, it is those things that you stick to. It is those things that you focus on. You are not going to be listening to Ari, Ari Warja. That viral content is Ari Warja. If it has nothing to do with the elements of your brand, the noise in the marketplace is none of your business. If it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with Pushing the pendulum of your brand in the positive direction. Focus. The law of focus says that whatever I focus on expands. I'm too, everybody's too distracted. You are distracted from, from, from building your brand, building a powerful brand. Focus. A tap dripping on a concrete. Before long, it will pour a hole in that concrete. That's the power of focus. So I think this is where. I'm going to be to end this class. Any questions? Any questions? I wanted to display a lot of things on the, on the screen. Any movement to have this kind of class? It was strictly supposed to be a practical class. Any question? Any question? If you have not started going live on social media at least twice a week, you are